So in summary, um, I think there's two different distinct ways to use Julia. There's the Julia language for rapid prototyping, for crypt scripting, for fast results. But then on the other end of that spectrum, it's still Julia, but it's the Julia that you write for speed, for blazingly fast, for compare with C and stuff like that. And the issue is not that this exists, but the issue that I have was that I did expect something very, very differently. And maybe um, we as a community um, want to think about how we want to uh, um, deal with these expectations. Oh, hi, uh, I'm Michael. Uh, I'm a research scientist with the Bosch Center for Artificial Intelligence. Uh, I'm located in southern Germany. I have a background in interpreting numerical algorithms from a machine learning point of view. Um, so I have a soft spot for numerical algorithms. I have a soft spot for machine learning. And that's what's also what I'm getting paid for at Bosch. Um, Philip here in the front, uh, he's waving. Um, he has essentially the same background. He did a lot of the heavy programming lifting, uh, but we decided that I will do the talking just to not switch speakers in a 15 minute talk. I need to switch slides, but the green button isn't working. Can I? Okay. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so um, more context, right? Um, uh, at Bosch, I don't think it will surprise you. Um, traditionally, there has been a lot of MATLAB. Um, machine learning uh, is happening a lot uh, in Python. Um, and so I was really adamant about uh, trying Julia uh, for something serious uh, at work. Um, and about two years, one year ago, the opportunity finally arose. Um, we had a project with an external collaborator who unilaterally decided that they were going to be using MATLAB, um, but we needed uh, to add some serious machine learning to it, and no one wants to uh, uh, work with MATLAB when automatic differentiation doesn't exist in this language uh, natively. Um, and so um, we waited until his code base stabilized. Uh, it's a big electrochemical simulation model, or well, big, maybe moderate size. It's roughly 1,000 lines of code, um, just the, the physics. Um, it's a differential algebraic equation. Uh, it has the, the smallest possible um, discretization is roughly 250 dimensions, uh, and the bigger di the discretizations is roughly 1,000 dimensional vectors. So that is like what, what sort of manage uh, memory we are, we're dealing with here. And now starts the interactive part of this talk. We figured, okay, so the syntaxes are similar enough. Um, we're just going to produce a faithful port of that original MATLAB model, and then we will have something that, that we can work with. And then we iteratively take it from there, and it's going to be uh, all rainbows and unicorns. So we expected it to take like a week um, for the for the very basic version, and then a month to get it running properly. So how who here thinks that this was a realistic estimate? Show of hands, please. Who thinks this should have take should have been even faster to port? Okay. Who thinks this should have taken a year? Okay, there's still not a lot of hands. Who thinks this should have taken 10 years? Okay, I think, I think you're not raising your hands. Like, uh, can, you sh can you raise your hands for me? Aha, uh -huh. okay. So all, you th so all of you think this should have taken a lifetime, I guess? <laughs> okay, so I hear a month, three months. It, it should have been done by now, right? <laughs> also, how fast do you think uh, this probably would have been the first shot. Like, as fast as MATLAB? Um, like, factor 5, maybe? Um, like, factor 5 faster? Factor 5 slower? Factor 10 slower? Yeah, so this was our experience as well. Uh, probably factor 10, maybe even a little bit slower. We don't want to know, uh, um, really. 
Um, and mind you, I, I really want to highlight this. It is the same algorithmic idea that we're using, right? So it's not like we're, we're comparing bubble sort to quick sort. So we had the same algorithmic structure um, and just um, the same algorithmic idea, but the way the two languages work did not work at all uh, as for, for Julia at all. And um, I think many in this room are experienced Julia programmers. So probably some of you are eager waiting to yell at me memory management and allocation and garbage collection. Um, I looked at the documentation prior to this talk and the, the performance tip section says you need to pre-allocate the output of the function, but it does not say that you ideally also want to pre-allocate all the temporary variables in between, in particular if you might have, have type, uh, type instabilities and, and stuff like that. Now, I would have liked to show you what the, the, the two languages would have looked like in our project. Luckily, I don't have to because the SciML ecosystem does this job for me. So let's um, take a first look on this left-hand side. I'm not sure whether it can, can be read in particular from far behind, but what I want to highlight, and you, if you squint at it, you can see it, the left-hand side essentially looks like the pseudocode from a numerical textbook. And this is also what I experienced when I first started out in the language. It's, um, there were, were these promises that when you program in Julia, um, your code looks like the mathematical algorithm um, and uh, there's no barrier uh, from, from going through the idea to the algorithm because it's just the same thing. And this is the left-hand side. And interestingly enough, it's called simple nonlinear solve. And then we go over to the right-hand side. Um, and the SciML ecosystem is, is a really fantastic ecosystem. I love it. And I'm also looking forward to Chris's talk later, um, who will uh, go into more detail about nonlinear solve. But this is the heavy-duty performance implementation of the very same algorithm. And so I have um, presented this talk on Tuesday to my collaborators. Um, and so what we can see here is the, the idea of the, of the code that, that well, one of the ideas of the code that make it fast is you have this cache object that allocates all the temporary variables that will be needed throughout the runtime of the code. And then very up high in the call stack, you uh, allocate this piece of memory and then you pass it around uh, in, the, uh, in the function. You give this piece of memory uh, to the callee and then you only do um, mutation and, and in-place memory management, and then you do, do, you do not have garbage collection, then you're really, really, really fast. Um, but I'm, to this day, I'm still not entirely sure what the add unpack macro does. I can guess from the name, but I'm hesitant to use it myself. And then also, like, it, it looks sensible, but it does not look at all like the numerical textbook. Like, if, if anyone tells me that this is the mathematical notation of, of the Broiden algorithm, I'm saying, get out of here, right? Um, now, to be fair, if we would have read the SciML documentation from start to finish, we would have stumbled across this example. Uh, I think it's the fourth example um, where um, the, the I think it is, um, uh, implementing fast uh, differential equations. The left-hand side is the basic version that I would have written and probably still write today, um, where this looks like the sensible thing to do. And then on the right-hand side, um, they, they go take you step uh, by step how to transform this into the fast version. And again, the same trick, you pre-allocate your temporary variables, you make sure that there's no type instability, you make sure that there's only mutating op uh, um, operations, and then you get the, the bare metal speed. Oh, by the way, this is not the final version in that example. The final version looks even more crazy with uh, bounds checking disabled and stuff like that. But I mean, for our purposes, um, I think I've made up my point here. And now I really want to get back to um, where I started. Right? So some of these problems that we experienced will be alleviated over time as, let's say, ecosystem and tooling improves, right? So there's already the pre-allocation tools package 
would have helped a lot if we would have um, knew that we would we should have used it earlier. Um, later also today there will be a talk about bumper JL, which I'm really really eager to hear about because I think this will also solve a lot of our problems, or I'm I'm praying it will. But I think the the more fundamental issue is independent of this tooling is that. Um, Every talk that you come and you hear, it's Julia is fast. Like that is the number one takeaway that I've heard. And my colleague who refused to switch to Julia full time um, told me to tell you this. Julia is failing at its core language promise. And that's just because his experience was he was disappointed by the speed early enough that he did not get to the stage where he would have been able to translate the beginner code to the um, advanced code. And he just gave up because um, his expectation was this is blazingly fast. His reality was it's slower than MATLAB by orders of magnitude. What am I doing here? Let me go back to my old programming language. And this is expectation management. This is communication. This is the way we as a community um, invite the newcomers in. And there's, there's two different styles of programming here. There's the, OK, Rapid prototyping looks like this. It looks like the textbook. You can get it done. It's nice. You can be productive. It's super. But then there's this other type of Julia where if you then spend iteratively time, you will get the speed and you will be as fast as C. But don't expect to be that there's no, no time in between. No, you, you have to do work and there will be a, a process where at the end of it, your rapid prototyping code will not look anything like your rapid prototyping code and maybe you don't want to touch it then anymore again. Like you, you want to be sure that this is what you want to end up um, uh, when you go there. And I think the last thing um, that I also discovered while preparing this talk was that there's then also the issue of taking this because we at Bosch, we put um, like hardware into devices that we can sell, like washing machines and stuff like that. And so th th at the end, I want Julia to run on washing machines. Um, but I'm also told that other people in the community will take care of this and I take their word for it because so far, like I trust in this community, I really like it, but I don't know whether th your experience uh, has been the same as mine, but this was my experience. Let's have a discussion of whether we can be more inviting, more accessible in this respect. Thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, do we have some questions over there? L L check. check. Alloc check. check. Okay, so that was a recommendation. Alloc check can help as well. Have you noticed much of a change in the community sentiment in this regard over the past couple of years? Because I would say that my experience, at least, has been that the way people talk about this has shifted in the direction that you're saying. But I'm wondering. Okay, so the question was whether um, this communication changed over time. Um, I don't feel qualified to answer that. Um, I have looked at JuliaCon entries for a couple of years now, and then I started programming with it seriously like early this year. And I mean that the talks or the resources that I that I like, that I consumed for advertisement of the language that got me excited about it were not the same resources that I used when I actually programmed the language. So. Um, maybe that's the case, um, but really like the resources that, that guide beginners from, okay, here's your first line of one plus one using Pluto and stuff like that to, okay, now take this thousand lines of code and, and reproduce it in Julia. Yeah, that is where, where we stumbled. Okay, uh, all the way at the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> so the question was what funky algorithms I tried to get in the washing machine and the, the, the answer is I cannot disclose this. <laughs> Ooh, some spyware or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just let you, you guys speculate about this. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the question was which hardware is running on washing machines. So I actually don't know about washing machines, but Bosch is a big uh, automotive uh, supplier. And I do know that in modern cars, so are, is everyone familiar with Gaussian processes that they are a special type of machine learning model? Um, so in modern cars, Gaussian processes are evaluated with every spin of the cylinder in your engine. And um, there are some custom hardware um, doing this evaluation. This is known information. I can disclose this. All right. I think we need to maybe cut it short a little bit because oh, yeah. uh, we have a little break now. But yeah, you can always go back to Michael, yeah. ask him questions, but also, yeah. I guess, uh, Philip. Philip. Yeah. yeah. So uh, approach them. I think they're nice guys. So uh, let's thank Michael again.